past. The resolutions passed against Libya are based on various allegations. Notably on the statement claiming that Gaddafi had led jet attacks on his own people and engaged in a violent repression against an uprising, killing more than 6,000 civilians. These allegations were spread before they could have been verified, but it was on the basis of this claim that the Libyan Jamaria government was suspended from the UN Human Rights Council before being referred to the UN Security Council. One of the main sources for the claim that Gaddafi was killing his own people is the Libyan League for Human Rights, an organization linked to the International Federation of Human Rights, the FIDH. You have a lot of numerous crimes in Libya. For example, on the 17th of March, you have a lot of 6,000 dead, 12,000 blessed, 500 disparus, 700 viols and 75,000 refugees. On the 31st of May, you talk about 18,000 dead, 46,000 blessed, 28,000 disparus. 1600 viols et 150 000 réfugiés. Si nous on se rend en Libye parce que c'est ce qu'on va faire, euh, comment on va. Qu'est-ce que vous nous conseillez pour réussir à documenter tout ça en fait Il n'y a aucun moyen. Vous savez, le gouvernement de Libyen ne donne jamais, jamais des informations sur les droits de l'homme. Donc il faut juste faire une évaluation de la chose. Et moi, je n'ai pas pris ça de n'importe qui, j'ai pris ça de premier ministre du bien, de l'autre côté, donc du Conseil national provisoire. C'est le premier ministre, monsieur, euh, monsieur Mahmoud. Euh, Mahmoud, euh, Mahmoud Nourfelli. D'accord. C'est lui qui a déclaré et qui a donné ces chiffres. So it seems the man behind these numbers is Mahmoud of the Wafala tribe, Mahmoud Jibril, the number two and prime minister of the Libyan Transitional Council. You know, these people who are in the government, those who are in the government, are in the same group. They are members of the Ligue of Veda. The minister of the information, for example, and the minister of education, and the minister of the petrol, et des finances, ce sont des membres de, de, de notre ami. D'accord. Oui, mais de quel gouvernement Du euh, gouvernement euh, provisoire. D'accord, du CNT. Ouais. Mercenaries shooting people in the eastern city of Benghazi. Il est entouré d'un corps de mercenaires payés grassement. African mercenaries. Uh, to have mercenaries brought in uh, from that state. Into Libya. Geneviève Garrigos, president of Amnesty International France, was invited to speak by the channel France 24 on the 22nd of February 2011, which is the following day after the alleged Libyan army attack on their civilian population. Et d'ailleurs, nous, vendredi et samedi, on avait des informations comme quoi, dans les troupes euh, qui étaient envoyées contre ces manifestants, il y aurait eu des mercenaires étrangers, justement pour accélérer le processus de répression. Oui. Euh... Geneviève Garrigos claimed she had information regarding foreign mercenaries working on the side of the Libyan army. This claim will also be presented by the Dr. Sliman Bouchouiguer in the United Nations Human Rights Council. These mercenaries seem to have carte blanche to pillage and kill uh, all civilians without distinction. Nevertheless, five months later, and after an inquiry by Donatella Rovera in Libya, the position of Geneviève Garrigos is entirely different. Ça a surtout été des rumeurs qui ont été colportées avec des accusations vis-à-vis -vis de personnes qui soit étaient de peau foncée, voire noire, et qui pouvaient être des Libyens, parce qu'on oublie que les Libyens du Sud peuvent, ne sont pas forcément de, de type arabe, et, ou d'autre part des étrangers, ce qui a créé une espèce de, de peur, de xénophobie, et certains ont été maltraités, voire battus, bon, que certains ont été emprisonnés et aujourd'hui, force est de constater qu'on n'a pas de preuves concrètes d'utilisation de forces mercenaires par le par Kadhafi. These rumors led to particularly dramatic outcomes. Indeed, being portrayed as being mercenaries, black Libyans were and are murdered in Libya. But broadening our military mission to include regime change would be a mistake. The task that I assigned our forces to protect the Libyan people from immediate danger 
and to establish a no-fly zone. It carries with it a UN mandate and international support. It's also what the Libyan opposition asked us to do. If we tried to overthrow Gaddafi by force, our coalition would splinter. The real intention of the operation was revealed shortly thereafter, however, in a joint op-ed in the pages of the International Herald Tribune penned by Obama, Cameron, and Sarkozy. Our duty and our mandate under UN Security Council Resolution 1973 is to protect civilians, and we are doing that. It is not to remove Gaddafi by force, they wrote in their editorial. But it is impossible to imagine a future for Libya with Gaddafi in power. It is unthinkable that someone who has tried to massacre his own people can play a part in their future government. Within a month, the true aim of the intervention to assassinate Gaddafi was confirmed when NATO forces bombed the personal residence of Saif al-Arab Gaddafi, Muammar's youngest son, in an admitted attempt to kill the Libyan leader himself. While Gaddafi himself was not caught in the strike, his son and three of his grandchildren were killed in the bombing. Now it is confirmed that the strike that resulted in the death of Gaddafi was initiated, organized, coordinated, and led by NATO and SAS forces. The attack began when Gaddafi was fleeing CERT in a convoy of 75 vehicles. Drone pilots at Creech Air Force Base in Nevada launched a round of Hellfire missiles from a Predator drone aircraft, destroying the lead vehicle and prompting a French bomber to release two laser-guided 500-pound bombs into the center of the convoy. British SAS troops, meanwhile, coordinated the ground forces that eventually captured Gaddafi. The news of Gaddafi's death was greeted with elation by NATO leaders around the world and echoed by pundits and talking heads of every political persuasion. It cost us a trillion dollars to get Saddam and a billion dollars to get Gaddafi. Well, Libya says they're going to pay back the billion that we spent, too. So it's going to end up being sort of free for, free for nothing. So let's get in on the ground. There's a lot of money to be made in the future in Libya. There's a lot of oil to be produced. Boy, I tell you, they, these Arab dictators, they're not very original. Just like... <laughs> Saddam Hussein caught him in a hole. Umar Gaddafi was a bad guy. The ostensible justification for the entire campaign, however, the charge that Gaddafi was engaged in a massacre of his own people, has since been shown to be based on falsehoods, misrepresentations, and undocumented allegations.